Alright, I finally got my army together and I'm going to march on to lose his army as it's finishing its siege. I've got a bigger force than he does, but I'm also attacking him on terrain where he will fight better. Fortunately, as you watch the battle, you'll notice the mercenaries, once again at the center of combat, will be able to push aside his forces easily. Now, I've besieged uh, that province and that county, but I'm going to pursue Toulouse's army and crush it completely before going back and uh, continuing that siege. I really want to make sure he's got nothing in the field so that I have free reign to uh, besiege his castles and holdings. And it looks like Toulouse is going to re-recruit his levies, but as you can tell, most of his manpower is exhausted. However, since he has re-recruited his levies, I'm going to clean them up real fast, and then I'm going to decide whether I want to reclaim the lands he's occupied or whether I want to just besiege his territory. And just my luck, I get to be known as brave from now on. I've proven that Philippe is brave in combat. I got lucky. Normally, it's hard to get uh, traits from combat unless you fight long battles, but you get lucky every once in a while. And that's good. I could use the, uh, I could use the reputation as a brave ruler. That'll help short my relations with some of my uh, less loyal vassals, unless they hate a brave liege. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and besiege his land and leave him occupying some of uh, France's other lands. I'm also going to re-raise my levies, see what else I can get into combat. It won't be very much, but it'll be some. I've, Since I've pretty much destroyed most of his manpower, I can leave a small besieging force in the territories occupied by Toulouse while the main body of my army starts working on his personal lands. And yes, there are a couple of very tiny stray armies but I, I'm of his, but I, I'm not worried about them. Uh, they couldn't even uh, finish a siege if they wanted to. And just because there's a war on doesn't mean that my courtiers are not jockeying for key positions on my council. Uh, this guy wants to be my steward. Uh, he, that's not going to happen right now. Part of the reason I don't want him to be my steward is because the current steward is also one of my vassals, and if I fire him from my council, that'll make him unhappy. I've already got enough problems with vassals right now. I don't need to add, the, add to them. Uh, one of my sisters has come of age. I've got some kids that need some educating. Unless I have some real superstars, or if it's one of my own personal children that needs educating, I generally don't worry too much about the education of children at court. However, who am I going to marry my, my sister to? I'm sorting through and seeing if I can find myself an alliance. Uh, the King of Abyssinia is open, but he wouldn't be that useful as an ally, as much as she would like to marry a king. We'll see if the Duke of Savoy wants to marry her, and he would make a nice ally, even if he's a vassal of the Empire, and he accepts. You'll notice the moment the marriage uh, took place, I got the call vassals icon appeared at the top of the screen. I'm not going to call him in for this war. I'm going to kind of hold him back. I mean, I, I can defeat Toulouse by myself at this point. Oh, but he's going to ask me to join his war. Let's see what he's doing. Oh, and this guy's lobbying for one of my prisoners, and I'm not letting that guy out of jail. That ain't happening. He wants help seceding from the Empire and becoming independent. But you know what? I'm not really interested. That's not what I allied with him for, and quite frankly, attacking the Empire would be really, really stupid right now. So we're just going to ignore that. I'll take the prestige hit. You'll notice that while I'm waiting for these sieges to be done, I keep clicking on the uh, 
de jure duchy map view so I can see who has territories where. And one of the things I'm going to do is try and fix some of the uh, inconsistent borders my ducal vassals have. I'm going to transfer some vassals around in order to make sure that dukes have the right vassals. This will make them happier. And in this case, the Duke of Normandy is also the Duke of Anjou, so I passed him one of the titles, or uh, passed him one of the vassals related to that duchy. Alright, I finally wrapped that siege up. We can take that northern smaller army and begin reclaiming uh, another piece of occupied France. I've also sieged yet another part of his personal lands. And oh, good luck! My wife is pregnant now! Might be able to get an heir. I've actually, I'm not too excited about having an heir right now. I do have a younger brother that can carry on the dynasty if things come come to that point. Uh, but it would be nice to generate some more males of my dynasty in order to actually uh, ensure that things get passed on. Uh, infant mortality has been creeping up in various versions of CK2 as they've been updating the game. And the last thing I need to do is run out of airs just because my ruler was too lazy to actually do his job. Toulouse is not interested in surrendering yet, although he would take a white piece if I offered it to him. Uh, I'm, I'm really not interested in that right now. But it's good to know that he's feeling enough pain to at least consider uh, accepting a white piece. I fully intend to complete his defeat and send him to prison, and then that will mean that the two biggest vassals in my kingdom are now rotting in jail and can't get up to any mischief. Okay, I've had my vassals' levies raised too long. I'm going to start facing deteriorating relations with my vassals the longer I keep their levies up. However, I'm not too worried about that right now. The penalty only starts out at minus five. It gets worse over time, but I can handle it for the moment. I need to finish uh, defeating Toulouse anyway. A daughter. All right. Not a son, but that's okay. I can make use of daughters, too. One of the advantages of keeping the fight on the Toulouse's land rather than on my own is that you'll notice I have no problem consistently raising my levies again and again. But you can't raise levies from occupied territories, and it is dangerous to raise levies in areas that are under siege. Now this guy still doesn't want to throw in the towel. I'm not sure what he hopes to accomplish by dragging out the war. See, the bad news is, um, every time I occupy his holdings, I get a little bit of cash in the form of loot. But that's also hurting him, because he's not getting any revenue from occupied territories. He's also not getting any levies from them either. As if the war wasn't enough, my vassals are plotting against one another. This event you see here is a, a false accusation event. Anytime you get this, you know that one vassal is manufacturing evidence of treason against another vassal. Depending on your traits, you get a, a, a variety of choices in that event. Normally, I don't like imprisoning vassals on false evidence, but if someone brings false charges of treason against someone that I want to move against, it's awfully convenient because... Since there was faked evidence, you can get away with no tyranny penalty, even if you piss off that person's family. Let me pause the game right here for just a second while we're looking at the Laws screen. 
you'll notice that I'm not capable of changing any laws right now. If you remember back about 20, 25 minutes ago, the Pope asked me to change from free investiture to papal investiture. I consented to that, but that used up my one chance during the reign of this particular ruler to change crown authority. So I'm stuck with uh, the absolute minimum of crown authority until this ruler dies. One of the ways uh, Crusader Kings 2 prevents the abuse of the uh, laws system is it won't let you change laws with any frequency. Um, this has the consequences that you can see right now. The other laws relating to feudal levies and taxation and all of that, those are not crown laws and they can be changed every five years or so. Regardless, while you're under a regency, you can't change any laws anyway. So my ruler is stuck at a point right now where he's waiting on cooldowns in order to adjust the laws of France to where he would like them to be. And remember, he was a, under a regency for two years, so for two years he couldn't do anything anyway. It looks like I've actually forgotten about that army that's sitting up uh, slightly to the north there. I may have been waiting a little too long for the rest of France's levies to rally on that one location. It sometimes is easy to get distracted and forget if you have multiple armies sitting around. But I'm going to rectify that and we're going to get them on the move. Uh, sometime today I'd like to finally force Toulouse to surrender, although he's still not in the mood. For those who've played other Paradox titles, uh, you may remember that there are strategies that involve covering all enemy provinces with your troops so they can't accomplish anything. Um, that strategy doesn't work very well in Crusader Kings 2 because you, don't, you can't actually prevent them from raising levies in a province, but also uh, the damage done to the defenders while not repaired while you don't have enough troops in the province. Uh, their morale recovers back up to full strength if you have an insufficient besieging force. So there really is no point to trying to cover every single county or holding with a besieging force. Although you can still leave behind small forces temporarily to go on the move. But this army that's got my mercenaries in it is so small now it can't really be divided up without endangering the progress of the current sieges. So I'm just going to have to wait or raise new levies or raise new mercenaries or something in order to drive away that really tiny force that's just barely making headway in Toulouse proper. If I'd been thinking about it, I probably would have had the outliner running so we could see the progress of all the sieges. But if you notice, if you look to the right of the troop numbers, there's a little castle icon and a red-green indicator. And the more the lower the green part gets, the closer the siege is to finishing. Uh, I, I, I thought when I was doing this that I would keep the outliner hidden in order for player or for viewers to actually see what's going on on the map. If I do this again, maybe I'll have the outliner out so you can uh, get a better idea of what's going on in terms of game information. Okay, that siege is finally done. And... Well, it looks like I decided it'd be more important to finish uh, sieges closer to that county because that army that's farther away might not be able to get there in time. Oh, my brother has gotten old enough to get married and have his own lands. He's my heir currently, so I need to get him married off. And then uh, I'm going to find a title to give him, although he might not get one right away. Let's see who I'm going to marry him off to. The Duchy of Provence looks like it's got a, a likely marriage prospect. Let's see if they'll take it. It'd be nice to have alliances in both Provence and Savoy in the south. All right, they've accepted it. I can take the cash that allies me with them as well, although I'm not going to invite them into my current war. All right, that siege is done. Now I can move the mercenary army to defeat that tiny little Toulousean force. However, since I'm allied to Provence, the Duchess is going to ask me to join her war. And I'm sure you all can guess what my answer is going to be. 
there's technically not a hell no answer, but again, there's no way I'm going to go to war with the entire empire right now. I'm trying to tidy up my own internal problems. It will cost me prestige yet again. Bear in mind, the whole purpose of this project is to become exalted among men, and I need 1,000 prestige to do it. I don't seem to be making a lot of progress. As ineffective as it is, the Duke of Toulouse uh, keeps raising his levies. I suspect he's out of cash and can't afford mercenaries in order to throw me out. I kind of wish he would surrender, but I just don't have enough war score to force him to do it yet. But on the other hand, there's not a lot for him to do either. Oh, here we go again. Another plotting between my vassals. The Duke of Flanders wants to throw the Duke of Burgundy in jail, and I really don't want to have any part of that. They're both loyal to me. There's really nothing to be gained by throwing those old guys in jail. If I wanted these sieges to go faster, I'd have to invest more in siege technology or bring a lot more troops to the to the siege. You get a bonus to reducing the morale of the defenders by outnumbering them by large margins. I could hypothetically run assaults, but I really don't need to chew up my manpower pointlessly. Uh, there's no way he can out-siege me at this point, and by taking a more conservative approach, I can preserve what little military strength I have in case something goes wrong elsewhere. He still doesn't think uh, he still doesn't think I can beat him all the way, so I'm gonna have to crush that army and move on to sieging some other counties. At least with the loot I'm getting from uh, conducting successful sieges, I, the campaign is beginning to pay for itself. Oh, and I just captured an enemy prisoner. I've got, I think I will ransom him for additional cash, except he can't afford the ransom, so he's going to have to rot in prison. That guy, though, I can ransom. It's not much, but adding another 25 gold to my coffers will certainly go a long way to keeping the campaign uh, on an even footing. After all, I'm going to hopefully use a pile of cash to create enough ducal titles to propel me to... 1,000 prestige, which will make me exalted among men. I still have one vassal that's kind of unhappy with me, but as time has passed, I've been managed to mitigate the short reign penalty, and I actually should start accruing the long reign bonus to vassal relations. This, this will make the game progressively easier for my ruler, Philippe, as time goes on. And I've got a message from the Duke of Toulouse. Let's see. All right, he's throwing in the towel. He's done. He's going to lose the prestige. He's going to go to jail. And that puts Toulouse back into the Kingdom of France. I can also uh, disband my levy, send them home. This will cure any vassals who are unhappy with the length of time their, va their levies were raised. Now I've got to decide what I'm going to do with both Toulouse and... Aquitaine Gascony.
Now, if you remember way back at the beginning of the game, I imprisoned uh, the Duke of Gascony, who's also the Duke of Aquitaine and Patois and some other stuff. Maybe now is the time to banish him and confiscate his lands. I'll get all his cash and I'll get all of his titles. And I've just done it. Now, of course, this is putting me way over the limit for personal holdings, but my goal isn't to seize all his territory for myself. I'm going to re-engineer the southwest of France so that I have three smaller loyal dukes as vassals instead of one giant huge vassal. Also, remember my brother, who's younger than me, has come of age, and he's currently my heir, so I might want to give him some of these titles, too. He would certainly be a loyal vassal under these circumstances. But I can't give all the titles to my brother, so I'm going to browse through uh, the Duke's former vassals, find people who are loyal, and grant them titles. I'm also doing this in the, in the de jure duchy map mode so I can make sure that uh, the right counts are going to the right ducal title. Uh, that'll just cut down on inter-vassal wars and make everyone happier, which is what's important. While I gave Gascony to one of a one of the counts in the south, I'm going to give my brother uh, the Duchy of Aquitaine. This will make him happy. Uh, it'll also make him a strong supporter of me in the south. One of the more recent additions to the game, you'll notice there's a little checkbox for uh, giving all of the titles associated with a duchy or a kingdom to someone. Uh, this makes it easier when you're trying to uh, handle giving multiple titles to a vassal. You don't have to click through and do them all individually. Uh, once somebody has at least one title from you, you can click Grant Duchy X to them and click the all other titles associated with it and they'll get the whole duchy. While I'm sorting through this issue, I should point out that I did get a decent amount of cash from uh, confiscating his property, which will let me create uh, some new ducal titles, which was one of my primary goals for this whole activity. Um, that's going to generate some prestige for me, but I need to make sure I assign titles and created titles to the right people so that I can make southern France a little better organized. It's also time to reorganize my council. I'm secure enough in my rule that I can fire some people and replace them with folks who are more competent. I can also award some honorary titles to the people I want to keep uh, on my council to ensure their continued loyalty. I'm not in nearly the dire straits I was back in 1066, but I still need to kind of keep an eye on things. It would also be nice to be able to actually uh, consolidate my rule with some more competent people. Remember that every time you fire someone from your council, you take a relations hit with them. Uh, something to keep in mind as you uh, play through the game. The game does have a handy dandy vassal view that will make it easier for you to browse through and check the loyalty of your vassals. You'll, you'll notice that things are looking okay right now. Uh, some of my disloyal vassals are like the Duke of Toulouse who's rotting in my prison, and quite frankly, he can be pissed at me all he wants to. Uh, I'm not going to let him out of jail. Uh, I can't afford to confiscate his titles and property right now. I already got enough of a tyranny hit from uh, doing that to the Duke of Gascony. And I still have one vassal that doesn't want to play ball, but he's just a lonely little count, and uh, he's going to get completely crushed here in about two seconds. Watch this poor little guy get it. In circumstances like this, I don't bother being very strategic. Uh, I've got him outnumbered uh, by several orders of magnitude. Uh, I don't need to think about this. I can just raise all the levies and just march them all to the affected area. Um, Oh, the Duke of Toulouse wants to have better accommodations. That's going to be too bad for him. Uh, he's not going to get them. I should uh, tell everyone that while I would like to uh, confiscate the Duke of Toulouse's lands, 
It is possible that he could die in prison just from natural causes. If he dies in prison from natural causes, his heir will take over and I won't be able to banish and confiscate the land. Yeah, that didn't take long. Uh, the tide has definitely turned in favor of my ruler. I'm going to have to decide what I'm going to do with him later on. Uh, I might get rid of him and take his land, or I might uh, just let him rot in jail. The Duke of Flanders is not particularly happy with me. We're going to see what he's uh, going to get up to in his life. But uh, unlike where we were... Eight years ago, I'm not nearly as insecure on the throne. There are some plots, but nothing I'm too worried about. Now, there's my wife again. She is still fighting her independence war against uh, the Holy Roman Emperor. Uh, anytime you turn down uh, an invitation to join a war, uh, there's a five-year cooldown before the person can ask you again. And her war has not stopped. And while all this political stuff is going on, here we have a very tiny little story about hunting going on in the background. Uh, I have to decide how I, who wants, who gets wounded, and who doesn't get wounded. Uh, I'm still not going to join my wife's war. I've got better things I need to be doing with my time. You notice if you look at the map here, though, she's not doing too bad. So I'm not worried about it right now. I should point out that when you turn down uh, the offer to join a war from one of your allies, they, your relations with them drop. That's why my wife isn't that happy with me. Uh, oh well, she can just deal with it. Now you'll notice that for my wife, her current heir is our daughter. But you'll notice that for me, my current heir is my brother's because the the different inheritance laws in our realm. Uh, her daughter or our daughter is the only one who can inherit her titles, whereas my brother, because of the inheritance law I have, can inherit my titles, which means currently if I don't get a son, I won't be able to join Tuscany to my kingdom. Remember that claim I generated on Brittany way back in the beginning of the game? Now I'm going to be able to make good on that and fight my first offensive war. Since I now actually have real military strength, this war isn't going to go well for Brittany at all. I should point out that I did have the option to push the claim of one of my vassals, but I'm not going to do that. M my goal is to conquer uh, Brittany for myself, consolidate it as a duchy under the rule of the crown, and then grant it to someone who's loyal. I don't want to beef up the power of any of my individual vassals that currently exist. Uh, th that's not part of the plan, and it won't help me achieve any of my goals. And since conquering Brittany doesn't require a lot of uh, brain power on my part, I'm going to browse around and start creating some of the duchies that I'm able to create. And which one should I create first? Yes. How about that one? 200 prestige.